Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jacqueline and today we're looking at our favourite Christmas movie interiors and architecture. Now, I am a huge Christmas movie lover and I think like a lot of you, year after year I re-watch the classics because they're just so comforting and they really set the scene for the festive season. And as part of our Christmas series, I wanted to analyse six Christmas movie sets because as a designer, I find it nearly impossible to watch a film and not centre my attention on the production design. Because it's the holiday season in these films, I usually find that the design team go even more over the top with set design, decorations and even the architecture. So that's what makes Christmas movie set design so interesting. So let's jump into the first film. Okay, we have a classic Christmas movie, one of my all time favourites, Home Alone. Of course, spoiler alert, I mean, actually, if you haven't seen the film by now, you may as well just click off the video. <laughs> of course, where we see Macaulay Culkin home alone at Christmas time when his family accidentally leave him when going on vacation. And there's lots of antics and buffoon burglars along the way. The McAllister's house is supposed to be set in the Chicago suburbs and the exterior was shot just north of Chicago in the village of Winnetka, Illinois. The house itself serves as the main filming location for the majority of the film, making it a key feature in the production design. And when I watched it as a kid, I kind of thought it was the most magical Christmassy house ever, especially the interior, but as an adult, it's actually more the exterior that impresses me. Built in the 1920s, the house is 4,200 square feet and has five bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms. The iconic suburban home is constructed with red brick and is designed in the colonial Georgian style boasting a precise symmetrical facade, decorative cornice mouldings, deep green louvered shutters, dormer windows, and a panel door with side lights and a half circle fan light transom. The Georgian style was most common in the early 18th century until the Revolutionary War, when the American federal style materialized. The house itself at 671 Lincoln Avenue, believe it or not, is now an Airbnb. So if you're looking for a home alone Christmas, there's your answer. While some of the movie is set on the exterior, we of course spend the majority of the time inside the house, or do we? The only interiors shot at the Winnetka house were the main staircase, basement and an attic, so not so much. Most of the interior shots that we see were actually shot in a custom house set built in a gymnasium in the local high school because the real house was just too small to fit the crew and filming equipment, which is quite understandable. So production designer John Muto thought up the idea to fabricate a working set in both a gym and an unused swimming pool. Yes, really, a swimming pool. You'd usually find that a Georgian colonial house would have a formal living room, dining room, and sometimes a family room, and the Home Alone house followed that layout as well. The interiors that we see are very purposefully designed as they only include red, gold, and green accents, a trick used to subconsciously make the audience get into the Christmas spirit. The colours were inspired by antique cards and Norman Rockwell paintings, and when set director Eve Corley pitched the idea of making the house have a Christmassy appearance, everyone got on board. However, because red, green and gold decor wasn't trendy during the early 90s, a lot of the film decorations and props were custom made or upholstered to match the festive colour scheme. And fun fact, colour changes are used throughout the whole of the film to portray the mood of the characters at the time. For example, when the McAllisters are together as a family, the tones are warm. However, when they reach Paris and realise they're in turmoil as they forgot Kevin, the atmosphere shifts to cool blue tones to reflect the sadness. The next Christmas film is another one of my favourites, and I think a film that single-handedly sent English cottage architecture into the zeitgeist, and it's the holiday starring Kate Winslet, Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, Jack Black, and Eli Wallach. When the two female leads are fed up with their own love lives, they swap corresponding houses to gain a sense of adventure. This is definitely one of my top feel-good films. I mean, it's written and directed by Nancy Myers, so how could it not be? And Iris's cottage, which is supposed to be located in Surrey, England, is a location that brings so much warmth and character to the film. Of course, the idea is that the workaholic LA woman Amanda swaps her obnoxious Spanish revival mansion for a humble, quaint English cottage. But you may be surprised to learn that the cottage doesn't exactly have a humble price tag. We know it as Rose Hill Cottage in the film, but the real life Honeysuckle Cottage was the building that inspired the set. It's a classic stone cottage with ironstone galleting, brick coins, and an ornate porch. 
The real cottage we see in the film is in fact a set designed by production designer John Hutman and was actually constructed in only two weeks, as well as a full stone wall to complement. And the interiors were shot on the Culver City soundstage in California. And I know that it's kind of disappointing to hear that this cottage was basically completely fabricated from scratch, but don't be too bothered because there's honestly thousands of cottages just like it in the English countryside. I have a whole video on English cottage architecture, but it makes so much sense that a set was needed to shoot the inside scenes, as English cottage interiors are renowned for having small floor spaces and extremely low ceiling heights, which wouldn't have worked for filming. The design team, however, did a really good job at highlighting a classic traditional cottage interior that sums up a charming Christmas cottage. Warm lighting, chintz, a mismatch of patterns and textures all create an authentic English cottage that's cosy and filled with life. If we start to veer away from residential properties and look at commercial design, we arrive at the Gimbel's department store featured in the 2003 film Elf, where we see Buddy the Elf leave the North Pole for New York City in the hopes to meet his biological dad. During that time, Buddy inadvertently lands himself a job as an elf at Gimbel's department store located in Herald Square, Manhattan. When I was a kid, this was the store that I always wanted to visit simply because of the film, so I was pretty disappointed to learn that Gimbel's closed down in 1987. The store opened in 1910 and was a close competitor to Macy's department store. Designed by Chicago architect Daniel Burnham in the Palazzo architectural style, reflecting characteristics such as strong symmetry, detailed cornices, a neat row of windows and a basement level. The lower level was actually a unique selling point at the time as it allowed passengers from the 34th Street subway to take passageways right into the store. The towering concrete and steel structure has since been modernized and entirely revamped. And for those of you living in New York, you know it as the Manhattan Mall. Although everything that's occurred during the past two years hit the mall really hard and most of the remaining shops have vanished, so the building itself has had a long, sad history with closures. But it's not just Gimbel's department store that became defunct. A whole collection of department stores that were at their peak in the mid 20th century have sadly also vanished over the years. Which is really depressing because I think a lot of us visited department stores as kids and they had a particular magical Christmas flair, which kids nowadays aren't going to experience. Gimbel's was the department store used in the film, but because the original site was updated, the production team opted to use the textile building at 295 Fifth Avenue instead. It was originally built in 1920 by George Backer, a builder who came to New York from Russia as a cabin boy in the late 1800s. He sold shoelaces on the streets and later chandeliers before he entered the construction trade. The building, with Romanesque arches at entry level, alludes to a very simplified palazzo style. And it kind of had to be a modest design, as the whole building was actually built in less than five months. I know, right? What? <laughs> this kind of architectural style was extremely common for large department stores during the first part of the 20th century, and sometimes art deco details were added. The holiday decorations we see outside the store in the film were actually created using CGI. And ironically, given the two stores rivalry, the inside shots were actually filmed inside the 34th Street Macy's flagship store. Nonetheless, the set design does make Christmas shopping feel magical and does a great job of masquerading what it's actually like. Moving back across the pond for this one, we're heading to Scotland in a castle for Christmas. If you're not into cheesy movies that have all of the Christmas feels, then this might not be for you, but luckily for me, I'm all about the cheese. <laughs> Starring Brooke Shields and Carrie L. West, we see the character of Sophie Brown return to her ancestral village in Dunbar, Scotland, and purchase the local castle that has ties to her father. Now, this is a very new Christmas movie. I watched it the other day, and the majority of the film is set at Dun Dunbar Castle, which in reality is Dalmeny House, located in South Queensferry. Built in 1817 and designed by William Wilkins, the ornate mansion was constructed in a Tudor Gothic style and was actually the first in Scotland to be built in that style. It drew particular inspiration from East Barsham Manor in Norfolk and Hampton Court Palace, both manor houses built in a Tudor Gothic design. Highly decorated chimneys, crenellations, octagonal towers, onion dome roof spires, and both a Tudor arched doorway and central window are just a few features we can see that showcase this classic architectural style. 
This is a small yet significant difference as Tudor arches were wider and flatter than traditional Gothic arches. Inside, the rooms adopted the Regency style of the time, but the hammer-beamed hall, stained glass windows, and fan-vaulted corridors are unmistakably Gothic. The interior shots were also filmed on location, including the main hall and the Delmeny Library, where Sophie writes her next book, but when Miles initially shows Sophie the manor, some of the scenes were taken at the neighbouring historic Barn Bugle Castle. What I particularly love about the interior is that, even though it's set in an old Tudor Gothic manor house, the production designer Pat Campbell and team have worked hard to incorporate warming elements to make the space feel cosy, and of course, a vast collection of Christmas decorations immediately draws us as the audience into the festive setting. Sometimes in Christmas movies, we don't always have houses that look like this or like that. And no film takes unusual architecture to unbelievable heights quite like The Grinch, or more specifically known as How the Grinch Stole Christmas, starring Jim Carrey, Christine Baranski, and Taylor Momsen. As I'm sure you're all aware, it's based off of a book with the same name by Dr. Zeus, and Whoville is described as having wacky architecture, something that production designer Michael Corrin Blythe definitely incorporated into the film's adaptation for the town of Whoville. Whimsical fluid homes in both the architecture and interiors makes the movie have some of the most fun set design within a Christmas film. In a way, they're not really buildings, but more forms that play with the concept of architecture. Lauren Polizzi, who was a set designer on the film, said that Whoville was built on stage 12 at Universal Studios. Each set designer had their own set to design, allowing for each building to have their own unique flavour. Which is why even though there's continuity within the town, each Who's home is unique. The set was laid out like a medieval village, with the towering Christmas tree at the central hub of the fictional city. The town hall was based on Greek architecture, and department store Farfingles, where the Who's frantically overspend on Christmas presents, was modelled on Parisian Art Nouveau, Moroccan and Islamic architectural features. In the rare interior sets that we do see, prop master Emily Ferry sourced items from antique stores and combined them into new designs to give that classic retro Who look that we know today. In fact, I find a lot of the colour palette and furnishings were inspired by a mid-century modern design. And last on my list, but certainly not least, we have the classic film Meet Me in St. Louis, obviously known for Judy Garland's original version of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. The Smith family live in a Second Empire Victorian home, which was actually purpose-built on the MGM backlot, and a whole street filled with Victorian homes stood there for years until it was sadly knocked down. Second Empire homes were a type of Victorian style that became popular after the Civil War. It derives its name from the French Second Empire, ruled by Napoleon III from 1852 to 1870. And in fact, many government buildings in Washington were built in the Second Empire style during the time. The elaborate home is certainly iconic in design, as they're quite rare and certain architectural features make this building exceptionally distinctive. A mansard roof with decorative slate, cast iron cresting, bay windows, hexagonal tower with turret asymmetrically located, Italian oak porch, dormer windows, and decorative eave brackets. Although not all of the film is set around Christmas time, I can't help but make a connection between the red-white facade and candy canes, even though I'm pretty sure that that wasn't the reason behind the colour scheme. Nonetheless, you can't deny that when blanketed with snow in a wintry atmosphere, the house is noticeably the archetype of Christmas movie set design. What's your favourite Christmas movie? Let me know in the comments. If you want even more content from us, you can now become a channel member and gain access to a private page, design advice, behind the scene vlogs, and so much more. And if you're interested, just look for the join button on our channel page, either on your phone, and if that's not visible to you, you can access it via YouTube's website on a laptop. And as usual, please leave a like or an emoji down below to let me know that you enjoyed the video. And honestly, just by doing that, it really helps to grow our channel. But that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoy this season's Christmas film binge and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.